guest in the house by the name of Isis. Isis Rose. Isis Get it Rose. right. Dang. Isis Rose. Uh, and she's a... Uh, I'm a lot of things. She's a lot of things. She's a... She's, a, uh, jack, she's like a, a label, a jack of all trades. And uh, let me get the... Uh, Disclaimer done first, and we'll be right to the show. WRFU is an open forum for the Urbana Champagne and our community on, online community. The views expressed are those of the speakers are not intended to represent WRFU, UIC, IMC, or Urbana Socialist Forum. We got Heather Rose in the house. We got hey, hey. Damon, the creator in the house. Hey, hey, hey the man, real passionate. By the way, it's trade. There's no mention of legal marijuana around here. <laughs> and you will be all right. That's my, that's my big dog. We work out together every day. Oh, Heather, you know, you just got to always be correct around Miss Heather because she loves trying to play the mama role. Oh, shut up. But, uh, we, got Miss I we got a special guest in tonight. We had a, Today was a very interesting day because first follow had a meeting day. We had a great meeting day. We were talking about a lot of stuff. And for you viewers and listeners, we want... Try to get a little feedback on what you guys think about gun violence and how to approach it. We had a lot of good input in it, and people went great steps to express their feelings in the meeting. Me personally, I, I'm not pro gun. I think if you can own a gun legally, have one. Educate yourself on the gun, what you're doing to gun. Mm -hmm. If you're in the streets, you got a gun. You gotta realize you got that gun. That gun gonna lead to two things. Death and destruction. And if you hold that gun in your hand, you gotta know the consequences and educate yourself all around the board. No matter if you got it legally or illegally. But I don't think guns should be on the street illegally or nothing like that. I'm not with that, but I'm with if you're doing it the right way, you should own a gun. I'm not pro gun. Respect the gun. Yeah, that's period. all I say, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well we got a lot of great things going on today. We got Miss Isis Rose, she's a dude. Mm -hmm. What is it? Yes, I'm a doula. A doula? <laughs> she gonna break that down with doula I am, hands. yes. I will I'll, I will break it down for you. We're gonna let her take over the mic for a second. No, yes, yes, Miss Isis yes. Rose, uh, let the people know what you do. Okay, first I would like to introduce myself by claiming my personal heritage. I am Isis Rose, the daughter of Sheila Bland Rose, the granddaughter of Marsha Claire Bland and Cora Ben Rose, the great-granddaughter daughter of Stella mm -hmm. McDonald Ben and Lucy Rose Jacob. Hey. <laughs> uh, you, people are answer. trying to figure out are you my cousin <laughs> I'm going to just say I don't know but you know in somehow some way we are both roses so that's good I'm going to say yes we're, we're probably related yep <laughs> um, yes yeah, so I'm here because I am a doula um, I think the, the most famous doula that exists is probably Erica Badu. Um, if you love her and her music, yes. she is a doula. She's been a doula probably longer than I have. Um, and so that's like the easiest connection I can make to the field, but it's a growing field, even though it's probably one of the most ancient things, um, basically supporting people in birth and childbirth. Um, doulas go by a lot of names, pregnancy coach, labor support person, maternal health advocate, um, the list goes on. So it's just a small word for a very big role that we play and that's helping to improve people's birth experiences. Great, is, it, is that almost like a midwife too? Yeah, I'm gonna say that. Great question. Okay. So I don't know how long winded I should be, but Take no. <laughs> we got an hour and 30 minutes. Okay, mm. so doulas and midwives are not the same thing. Okay. Um, doulas are non, medical professionals so we we don't we don't do any sort of like you know listening to heartbeats or doing blood pressure checks we don't do anything that's going to like do any sort of health analysis if okay. you will um, a midwife is the opposite so a midwife takes more of the medical role and is responsible for the health of the mother and the baby um, doulas are more so providing informational educational and physical support during labor so while a midwife may not, you know, massage your back, a doula would. Um, okay. Where a midwife might catch the baby, a doula would not. And so I think people tend to get them confused because they actually follow under the same model of care, which is the midwifery model of care. Um, I know, so this is very long-winded already, but no, you're good. No, the sure. midwifery yes. model of care is one in which um, it's women-centered or it's centered around the birthing person. Um, it's low intervention, so mm -hmm. they don't necessarily advocate for technology, 
like fetal monitoring or using um, electronic technology, you know, low intervention, meaning that um, they're trying to manage low risk pregnancy so that there's no cesarean or surgical birth happening. Mm -hmm. um, they also believe in the power of you know, bodies to do what they're, they're made to do. Oh yeah. Um, and so they approach childbirth in that way. Whereas in a medical hospital context, that's not necessarily the case. And so that's why there's a lot of doula and midwife teams because they both have the same goals in mind. Okay. Okay. Uh, what made you do this? Are you, are you coming from a line of medical doctors or health field women mm -hmm. or what made you become or pursue this doula role? What made you wanna be, you know, a doula? Okay, good question. So a little bit more about me. I recently graduated from the University of Illinois. Great. Urbana Champaign. I, thank you. I was in a PhD program. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's to be determined whether or not I will finish, but right now I have a master's in sociocultural anthropology. And Ooh. during my thesis research, I was looking at um, a community of birthing people and birth professionals, also called birth workers, in New Orleans, Louisiana, where my father's from. And so I started doing that just out of like creating my own feminist anthropology project. And then that's when I realized that doulas are dope, especially, especially black doulas. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And so as a part of my field research, I actually took some doula trainings and then I decided to kind of um, move away from the researchy theory side into the practical application side of the work. Mm -hmm. And that's just a very condensed version of how I came to the work, but it was basically through research um, and learning that this work is important given the times that we live in. Yes. Um, black people and bodies are under attack. Um, Most definitely. <laughs> especially those of the female persuasion. Um, and so I definitely wanted to be somebody who was integral to the, um, the birth justice movement, I guess, who uh, people who are involved in addressing um, disparities in maternal health, especially along racial lines. Do you need like do you need any like medical education to do it? Um, no, you don't. So t to kind of get back to your question, I don't come from a long line of like medical doctors per se. Okay. Um, and no, you don't need a medical background to be a doula. Um, and that's kind of the kind of the point because as non-medical professionals, um, you know, we're not giving medical advice. We're more mm -hmm. so just giving you tools to empower yourself so you can better navigate the medical birth system. Um, because a lot of first-time parents don't really understand childbirth. Um, they're, you know, so when they get into these spaces where they have to start making decisions, a lot of times they're doing so and being coerced into making the decisions that align yep. with what the doctor wants right um or the nurse who's being pressured by the doctor and so mm -hmm. um being somebody who's more neutral or, or less inclined to go for the interventions or the drugs or the procedures um that's kind of the point so that you're not necessarily pushing parents into that direction right like, especially those who are looking to have like an unmedicated birth mm -hmm. um or just have more choice in the process, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You said, um, you said something that was really important about how our Asiatic sisters were under attack in the medical field. What do you think is that? If they don't know know much about the Asiatic sister body, or they just don't care? That's a great question. <laughs> so, um, I will explain. I will answer your question by thinking back to my research. Okay. Um, and so, like I said, my background is in sociocultural anthropology. And as a scholar, I'm inspired by the works of Dorothy Roberts, Harriet Washington, Deidre Cooper Owens, Kiara Bridges, Donna Ayn Davis, Julia Chimiri Opara, and Alicia Bonaparte. And it's important that we cite black women, so that's why I'm naming all these people right now, mm -hmm. um, whose work you may or may not be familiar with. And so what I like about them is that they illustrate how black people's lives and reproductive freedoms have been um, under attack since we were brought here mm -hmm. uh, under chattel slavery. 
um, brought here against our will. And so um, to this day, we still endure a lot of the things that we were enduring under slavery, which include um, coerced um, sterilization, forced mm. reproduction, medical experimentation, mm -hmm. um, surveillance, malign neglect, um, and just the criminalization of our indigenous knowledges and birthing systems. Um, and that's why I advocate for midwifery because, you know, when enslaved people were captured and brought to the States, they had their own knowledges and histories and traditions and birthing practices that mm -hmm. they brought with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, the modern obstetric system kind of supplanted that when they decided that black midwives were superstitious and dirty and didn't have the real skills to address mm. um, mortality during that time period, like early early 20th century. Wow. Um, so the short answer is slavery. <laughs> um, and it's in, it's lasting effects throughout throughout the generations. Mental effect. Yeah. What'd wow. you say? That's the mental effect. Right, yeah. exactly. Cause, yeah, because it, none of y'all is left, left untouched like with Serena. She exactly. Almost, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big name. The, the, what they put her through almost killed her. Right, right. You know what I mean? And so it's like, they don't. It don't matter what you get and what what accomplishments you make. They're really gonna care. Absolutely, and, and I you're think you're spendable. If they get a chance to do you. Yeah. I think that's yeah. why this this particular issue has been getting a lot more media attention since around like 2016, because this is something that crosses like class lines. Like it doesn't matter if you're an educated black woman, if you're just an everyday black woman you know, high school education, it doesn't matter where you are in your life or mm -hmm. what your background is because this issue affects you no matter what. Yeah. And sometimes it's actually worse for educated black women. Mm -hmm. um, and so just the detrimental effects of carrying the, the burden of racial stress and um, the effect that it has on your genes and your body, mm -hmm. you know, racism is actually one of the causes of, you know, maternal mortality because not only are there the actual like institutional and structural things that are happening in the hospital, like mm -hmm. being ignored by your provider, et cetera. Yeah. There's also like the effects that it has on your body. Like yeah. black women are more likely to have preterm births and premature babies because of racial stress. Right. Mm -hmm. And so again, this is something that's important to me because it affects all black women. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's time to really confront this issue in Champaign-Urbana. Yes. Um, because there's a lot of conversation about like what's happening in the US, what's happening in Illinois, but it's very rare that I ha hear anyone, if at all, talking about what's happening in this county or this town, you know, and I'm like, I know black people live here and they yep. give birth here and I've experienced that as a doula, but there's still no like cohesive mm -hmm. movement or community around these right. issues. And that's kind of what I'm attempting to do. Yeah. yeah I'm, wow. looking for, I, I'm, I'm, really, I'm looking for this article I had about these doctors talking about the, how they do our sisters. Mm -hmm. well, well, answer some questions. Why are, you, why are you looking for that? Um, there was uh, this one lady that I know of. Her sister gave birth to a, um, a baby. And the mom and the baby had some complications. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, what? Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? Like, they sent her home or they did what to her and it was just mm -hmm. like i was outraged and mad because i was like no that mm -hmm. should not be happening mm -hmm. you know you shouldn't send a woman away i recently i think on instagram youtube or something it was another similar case mm -hmm. where they sent the woman home and she finally um yeah, well, pretty much she had a stillborn baby mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they were it was complications and she should have been seen during that time and mm -hmm. we could have easily maybe like save the baby or mm -hmm. something like that but you gotta excuse me <laughs> my mouth is dry but <laughs> it's okay. um it's just like what the heck is going on why are we having these problems mm -hmm. and complications mm -hmm. over and over and over again mm -hmm. is it you know is it a setup of what what is going on why are we going through so much stress mm -hmm. if we are in a 
in a society where we want health to be number one mm -hmm. and we want everyone to have health <laughs> and yeah. Do available health oh, no. and yeah, yeah. supposedly you know mm -hmm. it's just like I know I went through um, two uh, births one was a c-section uh, one was a regular you know birth but I had complications with my daughter because mm -hmm. I'm a small person mm -hmm. you know so they had some complications so to curb that we might as well give you a c-section mm -hmm. the next time around mm -hmm. you know and most likely in the future if I do get pregnant again mm -hmm. I will get another c-section mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and it's like is this all for the money again and we get the talking and I get the yeah. I'm like let me step back before they be like oh this educated black lady mm -hmm. and she's gonna come in here and do this because there's more things that I want to talk about mm -hmm. about the health care system because I'm in the health you know um just uh, research of things mm -hmm. and I know for a fact that going in there and knowing certain things you might not need to tell them everything your doctor you need to try to get some preventative type mm -hmm. of you know um, measures behind you before you go start asking too many questions you know Can't find yeah. article, man. it just it's it's stressful it's a lot of stress it is very stressful and I think you know, a lot of people, um, you know, they go into their prenatal appointments with their providers and they're, I think they're expecting like to be comforted maybe, especially first time moms. And so when they actually get there and it's like maybe 30 minutes you talk to your doctor, but you've probably been waiting, you know, longer than that, yeah. depending on where you are. Um, and it's always like very clinical and like, you know, let's do a bunch of labs and let's yeah. do some blood draws and your baby might, you know, have this problem and your baby right. might be, you know, they're looking for defects in you or your child. And so it's automatically a stressful environment. Yeah. And I think that's why doulas are so important because, and I don't remember who said this, I think it was either Nicole Deggins or Shafia Monroe, but, you know, doulas are here to put the care back into prenatal care because yeah. when people go and get prenatal care it's usually just like are you taking your right. multivitamins mm -hmm. pee in this cup yeah. it's not like being treated like you're a person mm -hmm. like a person a person who's doing something extremely important which is bringing new life into the world right you're right. just rushing them and just pushing them in and out right because right. i remember back in the day they had the women in there three to four days now it's like a day or something they out of there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know they kicked my daughter out. i was bringing her some food and she was ready to go. Right, right, exactly. And I was confused because, you know, I was like, wait a minute, you ain't you leaving too fast, ain't you too early? Mm -hmm. So now they just push them out fast. Yep, I think, I think, I think it's about a lot money. of people are being um, discharged, and all that. right, 24 hours. Like, that's the earliest I think I've heard someone being discharged from the hospital after giving hours. birth. Yep, especially if it's a vaginal birth. If it's a C-section, you might be in there three days. Yeah, right. yeah they say if it's a C-section, you'd be in there longer, but if mm -hmm. you had a baby, You've been in like a day and a half and you're gone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So when you leave, like... it's important to have a village of people around mm -hmm. you yeah. cooking for you and bringing yeah. you meals mm -hmm. and yeah. going to Target for you because bringing, you, bringing yourself and your one-day-old baby into Target is not a good idea. Right. And, right. you know, culturally speaking, that's not even what we do as people. You know, mm -hmm. we, we usually stay in the home for, you know, 40 days, 60 days, and people care for us. But now it's like, the average person is like running a Walmart, mm -hmm. you know, they just had a baby a few days ago, but mm -hmm. we don't have people really pouring into us like that, you know, on a community level, like we did in the past. Wow. Well, I'm glad you on here. This is something to talk <laughs> about because it is very interesting, but at the same time, you being a black doula, mm -hmm. um, a woman of color doing something like this is, is really amazing because I know when I, when I was pregnant with my two kids, I didn't I didn't have a um, a black doula, mm -hmm. you know. I didn't have the black midwife, mm -hmm. you know. But now it's like you being young and pushing this, it's amazing. Well, I like thank it. you. <laughs> How long do y'all the doulas be around when they when they finna have the baby? Like, you mean like like at the actual birth? Yeah. Um, I think it's it's. Well, I think it just depends on the doula, but I think most of us try to provide at least 12 hours of continuous support. I know a lot of people, 
take longer than that to give birth, but I think the the minimum is like 12 hours. But, um, you know, sometimes doulas will be with you like while you're laboring at home before you go to the hospital. Mm. Um, if they've been with you at the birth all day, they probably won't go home with you when you're discharged, but they will come back and provide, you know, a couple of visits like postpartum. Mm -hmm. They'll be there to do light housework and maybe meal prep and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, continuous care for the birth itself. And then um, leading up to the birth, you have like prenatal visits with parents and you try to, you know, prepare them for the birth experience oh, yeah, and teach them comfort measures and, that's love. Okay. Yeah. That's love and That's care. good. They mm -hmm. said black. They said Asiatic women are 240 more likely to die from pregnancy or childbirth than white women, than Caucasian women. But well, we can't have a, we can't have a conversation about this country horrifying maternity mortality rate, or having a conversation about the race. And this dude right here, he went to the Senate to represent Joe Kennedy. This dude right here went to the Senate and talked about it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I would like to add that nationally speaking, black women are three times more likely than white women to die from pregnancy and birth related causes. What do you say? Nationally. In Illinois, black women are six times more likely to die from pregnancy and childbirth related causes than white women. Oh, shoot. So what's the reason do they say we die from uh, not healthy, So. I don't want to get it wrong, but I think it was published in 2018 or 2019. Mm -hmm. um, there was a study published recently that said that of the reasons why black women were dying, I think they said like 70 to 80 percent of those causes were preventable. Mm -hmm. And so these are things like postpartum hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm blanking, but I know it was like hemorrhage and other things that can come up postpartum. Like mm -hmm. Serena, I think she had like some sort of edema or embolism or something like that and those things are also preventative right um i think when you have a cesarean you um are at risk for like blood clots which can turn into more severe injury mm -hmm. and stuff like that and i think the reason why a lot of black women are dying because of things that are preventable is because when they tell their doctor hey i'm having headaches i don't really know why they're like oh just take a baby aspirin and go to sleep and it's like hmm you know, they're not, they're, they're, our concerns aren't being taken, taken as seriously because right. due to our history, we, you know, we're, we're seen as being able to take pain more or um, we don't have no, the it, same response to pain and whatever. This, and I, this, yeah. this dude, you see that already? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You saw that? It yeah, was this deep. was on Facebook. This, it, this doctor is talking about how like he's personally seen black women dying, yeah. dying from like heart attacks. Country, especially if you're black, mm -hmm. your odds yeah. of dying in childbirth are three to four times higher on average in our country. Why? Because you're not talking about access to health care. You're not talking about money or education. No, and this is going to be hard to hear. We believe black women less when they express mm -hmm. concerns about the symptoms they're having, particularly around you pain. You believe them and less. That's the common thread in all wow. the stories we've been hearing in the media, including mm -hmm. Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. Yes, even Serena Williams, the world class. Yeah, so it just, man, so they're not caring. Mm -hmm. they yeah, they don't care. That's the short but answer. But she, she, she hit it right, though. It, it, Man, listen, man. They know the key, the key to, to stop our growth is the sister. Sure, yeah, because they get they they, 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 they they breed us. Yeah, it ain't after they breed us, but yeah. they the nature us. They teach us how to be certain things in life. You know what I'm saying? They they the foundation. Like you gotta have foundation. And everything. While while the woman there can't be no man, or the man can't be no woman. Especially the Asiatic world, because we all in Africa we are so family orientated. And you, you talk respect your family, your woman, your your woman, your wife, your children, respect your elders, and they know the key to that. Yep. The, the woman is a great part, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, we live in the world now that they don't understand when, when we say women are strong, they taking out of proportion now. Mm. Now, now, I was at a. House market for last week, got me some baked chicken, and uh, we had the girls like, uh, I was like, what's wrong with baked chicken? She was like, no, I'm not cooking no baked chicken. I said, well, my woman cook me some baked chicken if I wanted some. I don't, I don't cook my man nothing. My man got to know how to cook. <laughs> I said, you, I said, I bet you single too. <laughs> 
I'm <laughs> laughing because my husband cooks for me, and I'm not ashamed. No, I cook. <laughs> no, I no, I cook. But it's 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 supposed to be a two way street. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? You don't you cook sometimes too, don't you? I do. Exactly. You ain't gonna say I ain't gonna cook for my mm. husband. That's true. <laughs> you ain't gonna have that. See, they they got that mentality now. Women, women, women expect a man to work, pay all the bills, cook, clean, and what's she gonna do? Look cute. Boy, you might look cute. They not, they not helping me out. What? I don't I personally know these women, so I, I have to. Exactly, but now, but, 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 <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but if you take it, now we talk, we talk oh. about the power of a woman, man. Oh. I'm talking, mm -hmm. and, and they brainwash these women to be like that. And when they get the mentality like that, they ain't gonna need no man for nothing. Mm. Basically, they gonna need, only thing they gonna need a man for is to use them. And then they're going to take the child and see the child be independent, don't want to look up to the father. It's all type of brainwashed so games. It's, a system. It's, it's, all, it's, it's a system. It's, it's all type of brainwashed games these people play with our women, man. Mm -hmm. And they know that that woman is the key to controlling the man, mm -hmm. especially yeah. us. Yeah, that's why they took the slaves and broke them down in front of their mama. No, that's why they ripped, why they, why they, why they ripped their women in front of them to say, yeah. your man can't protect you. Yeah, that, be, that's the thing they used to do. Kill their kids in front of them. Yeah. yeah, and the slaves had better birth outcomes. So. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> yes, we did. And, and probably, most likely, back during that time, we mm -hmm. were able to nurture the woman. We were mm -hmm. able and had what those time? rituals. You know, you and it was financially a, advantageous to have multiple black children mm -hmm. <laughs> and then if you ever notice when you got somebody like my cousin them and my sister she in that field when when they see somebody that know a little something about you know what I'm saying medical stuff when they in the hospital they they move more because they know somebody know what they're talking mm -hmm. about that's, that's why my, I hear my answer you always ask them questions yeah, yeah that's true you know what I'm saying talk to them you know look at them in their face when every time my sister had a baby or something my aunties and their mom and them, they talking to them yeah that's we true. know we watching that's true. And yeah. I think the interesting thing about being a black doula and having a black client is like sometimes the staff doesn't know that you're the doula. They just mm -hmm. kind of assume you're like friends or family. Uh -huh. And so, but when they learn that you're the doula, they start to straighten up. They start right, to appear right. busier. And this one nurse, she like held my client's hand for 90 minutes. And I'm like, isn't that my job? Like, yeah. you're the nurse. Why are you still here? Right. And so like they, they definitely act differently. You know, yeah, when they yeah, know that yeah. there's a support person present who is knowledgeable yeah. and can they know what's ask going questions. on. Yeah. yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, that's good though. Yeah. Like, I, like I heard something about that, about the afterbirth. What's up with this afterbirth stuff? <laughs> is it, it, no, I'm serious. What do you mean? No, it's like it's like it's some, it's some nutrients and stuff in the afterbirth. Oh, man, I, Are you no, talking I'm about serious. the placenta? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So what, what? I mean, that just depends on your school of thought. I definitely am of the mind that you know placentas are inherently valuable you know i don't encourage everyone to encapsulate the placenta even though that's what i do i also am a placenta encapsulator which means i grind it up and put it into pills for people to consume um but yeah you know whether we whether we ingest our placenta or not the hospitals are either gonna sell them or they're going to dispose of them as medical waste. And culturally speaking, that's also not a part of our traditions. We don't let people throw our organs away. We have burial traditions. We have, you know, traditions in which we mm -hmm. save it and, and you know, what have a ritual it? around a birthday or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not a part of our cultural history to mm -hmm. allow people to take parts of us and dispose of them like waste. What, what, was, what so, was it for? What would you take it for? The placenta? Yeah. Okay. So. You know, I have to do my little disclaimer because, again, there's competing evidence around this. But yeah. traditionally speaking, especially if you're thinking about traditional Chinese medicine or these other like indigenous medicines, mm -hmm. people believe that placentas have um, beneficial hormones and nutrients. Um, I personally took my placenta because, you know, um, postpartum depression and other perinatal mood disorders are a real issue. Mm -hmm. um, and because I felt like I was at risk for postpartum depression, and I know that when you're pregnant, you have all these hormones coursing through your body. And then as soon as you give birth and the placenta leaves your body and all the blood in your body that was there to support the fetus is no longer there, all those, all those horm hormones are leaving too. And so you have this like really significant drop in right. hormones. Why are you doing like that? But when you Dang. experience a huge drop in hormones like that, mm -hmm. it affects you, you chemically, it, it right. affects your brain. And some people believe that that's the reason why we see so much severe postpartum depression because 
you know, there's this huge hormonal shift that when you add the stress of having a newborn and also very little support because we now live in more isolated communities, um, that can cause serious mental uh, illness to set in very quickly. And so that's why I believe encapsulation is the way to go because, you know, um, it also has protein. It also has, you know, um, iron. And so if, you, if you've experienced any sort of blood loss, which I did, um, it'll help to replenish your um, your body with nutrients too. Yeah. So, yeah. so what is it like? Uh, the placenta? Yeah. So good question. <laughs> the placenta like? is an organ. It's about oh. the size of a dinner plate. Um, <laughs> it's your baby's genetic twin. So mm -hmm. when the embryo implants itself uh, to the uterus. <laughs> <laughs> when the embryo attaches to the uterine wall, mm -hmm. there's two things that begin to form, the placenta and the baby. And the placenta is basically the organ that filters. Um, it's a two-way filter. So food and other nutrients go to your baby through the placenta, and then waste from the baby leaves the placenta mm -hmm. and also exits the mother's body. So a lot of people think it's like a deposit for waste and that you're consuming a bunch of baby waste. That's not how no. it works. Right. That waste is already gone. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it's basically an organ that is created to sustain your baby's life. See, I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know the part about the baby waste. Mm -hmm. I thought. I thought it was to get rid of the mother waste so it won't go into the baby, like toxic chemicals and stuff like that. No, not quite. I mean, I think it does. It does prevent some things from crossing uh, into the baby's amniotic yes, fluid, but if you're, if you're taking drugs or consuming alcohol or anything no, that, that crosses the blood-brain barrier, it's mm -hmm. not going to stop that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but it is some, it is some truth to that, man, because them hospitals selling that stuff for some for something. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they, they hurry up and get it and, and, right. and they sell it. It's, mm -hmm. why and they you hurry it? up and cut it out. And, and, and they really and don't they, they take it care, They take care of that before mm -hmm. they take care of the baby. Yep. They really don't <laughs> supposed supposed to cut it off. I was going to my kids were born. They grab up. They, they think it, the baby came out. She hold the baby. They got that stuff there. Boom, and walked up the yeah. room. I'm like, what? Yep. And that would make me start wanting to get educated. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't remember stuff like that. Then when I was locked up, I started reading certain stuff. Like, man, I don't remember all that. Yeah. Come on. They come out, mm, they cut, yeah. boom. Then they get the baby in. Can you tell us in? why yeah. they sh why women shouldn't have that right. cut off, the placenta to the baby? Because I've read some information about <laughs> that, and I was like, Wow. Okay, yes, but I also want to go back to what you were saying okay. because when you first asked me about the placenta, I said that doctors either throw it away as medical waste or they sell it because wow. they do. And actually, if you follow Dr. Midwife on Instagram, I think it's like Dr. Underscore Midwife, she's amazing. And she posted in her IG videos like a clip from The Bachelor, the TV show The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. And there was this guy talking to whoever The Bachelorette was on a date. And she was like, what do you do for a living? And he was like, oh, I um, sell placentas. And she was like, what do you mean? He was like, yeah, you know, we kind of, we sell placentas to different buyers and blah, blah, blah. And they're getting them from the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And so, because why, and placentas are inherently valuable. Um, and if you, if you think about like cord blood banking and all the sorts of like stem cells that people mm -hmm. are pulling from these fresh organs, you mm -hmm. know, that is all related. Hey, I gotta cut you off. Hold it. I gotta, I gotta read out disclaimer. Okay. So, but, but get back on that. Because good, good, right. uh, that's very education. WRV is an open forum for the Urbana Champagne online community. Views expressed on these, on those of mm -hmm. the speakers, are not intended to represent WRV or UCIMC or Urbana Socialist. Basically, we're telling you people got their own, full, own way of thinking and the guests here. It's not a representative, nothing of uh, IMC, but this is a good guess and get some facts in this stuff. We don't believe it. Just do your own research. I always tell people do your own research. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, I always want to ask these type of questions and get the good answers. So yes, finish. thank you. Yes, please do your own research because I don't know the nitty gritty of biology and anatomy, and I certainly am not the expert on placentas. But I will say that people are selling selling your placentas because they're valuable. You should look into why they're valuable. If you don't want to eat it or ingest it in any form. Definitely keep it and do some sort of, you know, traditional ritual because we have them. We come from a long, rich history of birth and traditions. Right. Now, back to your question about delayed cord clamping. Mm -hmm. So your baby's umbilical cord is uh, really important. And 
you know that there that all the blood has drained from the placenta and gone into your baby when they're born when the cord is white and or it has stopped pulsing sometimes if there's an emergency your doctor will cut it right away even if there's not an emergency your doctor will cut the cord right away mm -hmm. and that's just because that's what they're trained to do but more and more research is saying that it's important to delay cord clamping until the you know all the blood has left the placenta and gone into the baby because a lot of severe um, consequences can happen yeah. and and create you can create a lot of problems when your baby doesn't get all that blood because um, basically what is the word I can't think of the word right now but I think like a third of, of your baby's blood is in that cord and so it's really important you know for them to have the proper like bodily temperature hemoglobin levels um, if they're already at risk for any sort of like I don't know postpartum condition or if they're premature or anything like that it's important that they have all the blood that was in that cord and again sometimes that doesn't happen wow it's it's just amazing that me doing my own research because i'm in health and i mm -hmm. read like numerous things and i just now found out like it's good to have that like you said, if that's your baby's twin, mm -hmm. that placenta is your baby's twin, mm -hmm. and automatically our body is well. a machine. Um, mm -hmm. It's just built to last, pretty much. And if you cut that cord off too soon, that sends some signals to the baby, like hyper overload. You know, like mm -hmm. it's just not not good for the baby. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah, just how everything works for the good and the betterment of you know just life and and giving the baby everything and mm -hmm. anything it needs mm -hmm. you know at that time definitely and there's a lot of um traditions that do like lotus birth right which okay. is where like you don't cut the cord at all you let it to you allow it to fall off naturally mm -hmm. from yeah. the umbilical yeah, I heard that too. um and they believe that that's like a more gentle transition for the baby from womb to the world you know you don't want to like you know, immediately start cutting things right. and detaching things from things. Cause you know, for a lot of people that feels very violent. Mm -hmm. um, and so gentle birth choices include like lotus birth and not smacking the baby on the bottom and like suctioning their face when they're born. Cause that's mm -hmm. very like invasive. And for a baby, you know, the syringe might look small to us, but to them it's like very huge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so if you have this like huge thing coming at your face, like mm -hmm. immediately when you start seeing bright light or whatever it can be very a very jarring experience for a newborn you remember when you was born i don't remember exactly. when i was born but a lot of people do believe that you know the experiences that we have either in the womb or when we first are born stay with us and so that's referred to as birth trauma like mm -hmm. if you come into the world in a traumatic way um some people believe believe that that's like the foundation of like your spirit you know your personality um so it's important that we take birth very seriously you know in that way because it, it, it affects moms and babies well i'm into the whole alternative therapy uh <laughs> alternative mm -hmm. medicine and i'm just so big on it that everything and anything i'm just reading on it and just trying to absorb it the best mm -hmm. way i know how you know Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm for a lot of different things rather than going to the doctor mm -hmm. every single time. I feel like you need to be I one because I can see you being one. I might do the natural pathy type of stuff. Okay, Let's see how it goes. But you know, with your little scarves, little yeah. African scarves. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great because I don't, I, don't I can't think of a single black natural path hey, doctor uh, in this town. So why you that's like awesome. That she, like, how they was why are you looking like that when she told. Talking about the placenta. You, you just He's say, like, oh. I was looking at the camera. You was like, no, nah, because it's coming out somebody. And she said, but well, that's natural though. She said, she chop it up, grind it up, pin the pills, give it to people. Some people yeah. put it in other stuff. Some people eat it raw. I, heard, I guess I heard people eat it raw. So. What do it look it's a, what it's like? Is it like a part of a stem to your or It's, it's a, a cord in the bag. So you eat the bag. Some people, I don't know. Some people eat it. I heard, I heard that I too. I mean, if you're eating it straight up, I don't think you're eating the amniotic sac. <laughs> I don't know because I don't eat raw yes. placenta, but mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody I somewhere is doing I mean, it. Is, I just had mine mind. encapsulated. I, I never. Oh, so you take the pills? Mm-hmm. You never heard it before? No. That's why we're here. Yeah. 
Okay. Nice community connection. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad we're talking about this. Yeah. So when you encapsulate it, um, is that is it like a thirty days worth of pills? Is it Ooh, like that's a good question? How often would you take it? Because I know a friend of mine. But you didn't sell them for her daughter. <laughs> her daughter <laughs> or her son was, you know, born a while mm-hmm. back, but she still has some pills that she will take. You know, just to. Well, so, honestly, that just depends on the size of the of the placenta because okay. everyone's babies and placentas are different sizes. So okay. I think you get between like 99 and 200 pills. And so okay. if, I think uh, most people recommend that you take a few a day for the first week and then, you you know, just keep scaling it back. And so in a month's time, you could technically run out, but you probably won't. Um, so it lasts for at least a couple months if you take okay. them consistently, I would say. Yeah. Keep them in face. There's people that drink uh what's the name milk too. Hey, placenta good for you, well, man. They thing, drink the mother's my milk. My sister did so. this. No, thing. breast milk. Have you ever yeah. heard of it? They, they take uh, baby I'm not your mom and put it on their face. You ever heard that? Yeah, my auntie my su- my I know, sister I know did that I and her face was we always were light skinned the people in our family. Hey. We was light skinned with red hair. Hey man, I knew a child used to pick that stuff on her face. And my sister was just like bright. Yeah, I and heard. cleared her face up. Hey, bro, I um, oh, Italian used to drink his own pee, man. <laughs> he was sick. Yeah. No, I mean, serious. I saw that on the doctors, the TV show. She no, was like, it was the only cure for whatever disease she had, and I was like, huh? Yeah, the, the, the human body is amazing. The human yeah. body is amazing. Yeah, your body, your body can handle you take if you take care of it, though. Right. That's the key thing: take Ooh. care of your body. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So can I blow your mind again? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm gonna ask some more questions. Talk to oh, him. well, you no, cause no, keep 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 going. No, go. I ask no okay. Questions. You want to know how much the pills was and all that? You, you might want some. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Well, I do want to save like you know a few minutes for the event that I'm having uh, yes. in February slash March, but I'm gonna wait to talk about that. Okay. So just to blow your mind again. I had my baby at home. I had a home birth. Uh, That's good. Wonderful. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Medication? Nope, no medication. Mm, was it like system. a big tub you had, I, or yes. did you have to order it? I had a Is water it birth. More yes. To it that you have to Mariah? do or prepare. Who was Mariah? <laughs> Mariah. Oh, the, the the small young lady. <laughs> so we, it, it is good. Okay. It was just getting <laughs> good. Hey, Mariah. <laughs> what did she say? She said it's it's just getting good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So did you have to, okay, so with a home birth, mm-hmm. do you have to pay for certain things in mm-hmm. order for that to happen and occur? Mm-hmm. You know, personally, or does the Medicaid, medical card, or whatever, mm-hmm. can you do that? Can you Good give question. us that? So as far as I know, Medicaid doesn't cover home birth in Illinois, um, but don't quote me on that. Okay. So Illinois is an interesting place Mm -hmm. and um currently only nurse midwives can legally attend home births and so i'm saying that because as of uh very recently maybe like last month or so um a committee was formed well the committee was formed last year but as of a month ago the committee in the um it's called the home birth crisis committee they determined that, and this is a, a group of, um, you know, midwives, obstetricians, family doctors, senators, legislators, etc. They determined that we should legalize uh, certified professional midwives, which are not nurse trained midwives. Um, they believe that we should legalize the profession and administer licenses to this to these midwives so that we can increase home birth care and access. Because when I had my home birth my midwife was technically practicing underground, meaning even though, <laughs> right, even though she's a certified midwife and she's done all the training that a midwife would do to be able to you know, do her job effectively, you you, she, wasn't, <laughs> she wasn't technically licensed by the state of Illinois. Mm-hmm. And so I have to say that because um, potentially the reason why Medicaid doesn't cover home births is because mm-hmm. we just don't have enough home birth providers in okay. Illinois. Yeah. Um, and that's another issue that's near and dear to my heart, um, because if we're talking about the pitfalls of giving birth in a medicalized system, mm-hmm. i.e. giving birth at a hospital and sometimes birth centers, depending on the birth center, 
um, we need to know what the, what our alternatives are. Like, mm-hmm. what are the options that we have? And our option is to give birth at home if we want to. Did you have a doctor there or? I did not. I had a midwife, a midwife. and her assistant. Mm-hmm. Um, my husband was there. My sister was there. I didn't have a trained doula present, but she's a friend of mine who I asked to be there. Um, and I'm really glad she was there. But, you know, it's not common for people to have home did births you, did you have medical in general. Like that? I'm, I'm the, like, did you no, need, there was like no IV or anything like that? You had no, no IV. Oh, you a gangster. <laughs> so did you have to no take IV. the baby to the doctor right after, after a couple days? Yeah. Um, so how did you like that? I mean, technically, we had to schedule a pediatrician appointment like yeah. within the first few weeks. And mm-hmm. I think we went to the birth certificate office like, I don't know, the first week. I don't even remember, but um, the baby my baby was fine like we didn't have to go to the hospital um Mm -hmm. and so that just goes to show you that even though there's this pressure to you know have all these things done to you Mm -hmm. and you know iv iv blood pressure cuff pitocin all these things that you know happen in the hospital that make birth less and less comfortable Mm -hmm. you know and increase your anxiety Mm -hmm. like once you're strapped to a bed or not strapped but once you're confined to the bed especially if you've had had an epidural that's when anxiety increases Mm -hmm. and it becomes more and more challenging to have a a birth that's comfortable and peaceful and all that stuff there to help you right it's It's there to help absolutely and don't get me wrong hospitals are great places um, especially in the event of an emergency but birth itself is not a medical emergency yeah Um, i I know that because we already know we we having babies like like uh, miss Patton. she had 18 kids and miss there you go yeah, they said she had 21 kids. Where, in the hospital or home? She had most of them home. Because this was yep. my mother's generation. They was older than my mother, a little older than my mother. None of and us would be here without home. Honestly, hey, exactly. when, when, I tell you this, the woods. when I tell you this, <laughs> from the beginning, she was no bigger than Heather. And she had like 21 she kids. Them out. Yeah, Papa. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, every week, every hush. week, Miss Cunningham pregnant. Oh, Catch hush. Miss hey, uh, <laughs> Cunningham stay tired. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I, I mean, it's true. And she didn't have all them kids she had, so she never had no C section. She just had kids. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. She had 21 kids. Miss, Miss Cunningham. Miss Diane mm-hmm. Bell, she had 21. And then the other lady, that her name was Miss Pat, she had 18. Dang. I've been hearing that number ever since I've been a yeah. child myself. You know how they go. Miss Cunningham had 21, and Miss Patton had 18. Mm-hmm. And it was all from the south. You don't hear about too many women having kids like you. Have, you hear about men having kids like that. Now, back in the like forties and the fifties, they did have like 10, 12 kids. Really? I've, yeah. I've had people in my family give birth to seventeen kids. Yeah, like a woman. My, yeah. 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 One woman, seventeen kids. Like my grandma, she had eleven. Mm-hmm. My other grandma had nine. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. you know, they yeah. had them like that. They started young too. They started young. And, and that was the, that's the scary part about get it. Them child like birth you, hips. I, I never I didn't see you when you was younger, but what? you you had a baby and you was you know, you said you had a complicated because you was little. Yeah, you know, like so how I'm built and how women are your pelvic area, yeah. it will automatically like shift and move. You know, once birth is starting to happen and come, and, and that's form. how the, that's how the so, mothers pull the baby out. That's how, yeah, the baby. I'm comes talking about like back in the, the big old head. Back in the day, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So the baby have a big old, big old head, but then you could be an itty bitty small woman at the bottom. Uh, you know? You your kid born? So. <laughs> no, I didn't. I was yeah. there. So the hormones no, and your chemicals mm. and stuff in your body starts telling you to soften those bones down there, so the. The baby's head can go in there, you know, and go pass through. So, yeah. me being small, and I don't know what was going on with the doctor, but he was like shoulder dystocia and couldn't get the baby out, and mm-hmm. probably trying to pull her out, you know, the wrong way trying instead of this way, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So it was complications during that time. So now it's like, well, since you are at high risk, we're gonna just cut you. Mm-hmm. And now from now on. They're like you're at high risk, so we're gonna keep on. Cutting. You said you said you said a good thing earlier too. That I like like you talk, you hit on when you was talking about uh, how they uh, make you try to get you sterile these hysterectomies and all that stuff. Mm. They, how they butchering our women with these false myths and, and stuff like that. Why? 
you know, me personally, books I read, you know, let me get a little deep here, so, you know. I thought we were already getting deep. But he is, it's getting <laughs> deep, I, right? I, I, I always go to a little different level. So, my intake on that, right, I don't think women should use rubbers. What? No, we shouldn't. It's not, it's not like natural. condoms? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. All right. All right. I'm listening. It's unnatural. Okay. One not one not made to go in the woman's vagina, but the only thing that was made to go in the woman's vagina was a man. Okay. So that's where all that, all I think, all that cis and stuff like, mm -hmm. like you said, you can, you can, and you can, like you said earlier, you can transform that to the baby, stuff like that. And cis is no complication down there mm -hmm. because that what it, and then. We weren't made to have sex with more, we weren't made to have multiple sex partners neither. Mm -hmm. yep. So I'm saying that's another thing. If we, if we, okay, no, I'm listening. You know what I'm saying? I'm not necessarily in agreement. No, you ain't got what you mean. So <laughs> no, I'm talking about I ain't talking about I ain't talking about I'm talking about I ain't talking about like okay, say you're a person, right? Yeah. Woman. Okay, I'm listening. You got different men that's going or men going to different ones. I'm talking about, yeah, mm -hmm. you might be in love with this person, mm -hmm. y'all break up, then get enough. You know what I'm saying? Then that to be. Oh, first. you mean at a time? Time, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. so I'm still have listening. Up, yeah. So I said, so we ain't made, we ain't, we ain't made to have multiple. It is true that too many different types of sperms in your vagina cervix region will like change the pH and like cause weird things to happen. That's actually true on a medical level. Yeah. So, so, <clears throat> so. So, so, what I'm saying, so, so, and, the, and these doctors have tricked you, like, cause you know what rubbers and stuff made of? Rubber, latex. Uh, yeah, stuff. Same thing. Polyurethane. Stuff you make, stuff you make car tie and stuff with, right? I will say that we do live in like modern times where there is a bunch of chemicals and stuff in the products that we use and our um, sanitary pads and our you know soaps and things. So in terms of what's going in and around your vagina and vulva, yes, definitely a lot of chemicals and a lot of things that don't belong and probably do create, you know, cancer problems Whoa. and cysts and fibroids and yeast that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeast infections. Mm -hmm. But then on top of that, you also have, like I said before, racial stress and other sorts of things that mm -hmm. um, can be passed down like intergenerationally, you know. Yeah. Um, because I think Black women are actually like at greater risk for fibroid fibroids too, and that you know that contributes to reproductive problems and sometimes infertility, you know. So there is a, a lot of stuff going on um, with our bodies that we just don't talk about, and a, a lot of it is like chemical exposure and exposure to foreign bodies and things that we didn't have to necessarily deal with a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. So you know I gotta jump in. <laughs> yes, I am reading and doing more studying on uh, autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I wanna be an epidemiologist or not, but you know, um, when you were talking about, you know, men and women, I mean, yeah, going and having some type of sex or whatever, um, any type of form or, or you know, um, I was just talking about regular All sex. That. You, Whatever. It don't uh, matter. Like, All you right? want to get so kinky over when you, when you start <laughs> thinking about certain things, it's 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 much bigger than just, you know, what we're referring to. Mm -hmm. Where germs are in our body, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Everywhere. Crawling on our skin, inside our body, there's millions of bugs and germs, good and bad. Mm -hmm. You know? But if you have a higher level of bad germs, you're going to have some type of problem, mm -hmm. you know, and you can pass it to somebody yeah. else, you know, but it's all in what we eat and what we don't eat and how we take care of mm -hmm. ourselves, you know. So the more we get into all these alternative therapies and medicines, we need to actually think about what is the cause, what's the root. We need to think about what we're eating, what we're not eating, what mm -hmm. we're not doing. And we need to get back to those alternative medicines or what the indigenous people were doing back yeah, in the day true. because it really works. That's true. That's true because um my old lady, right? She uh, she she uh, doing that uh what's called that ten day ten day detox, what that detox stuff? It's like a cleanse. Yeah, cleanse. Mm -hmm. 
every night, I used to massage her arm because her arm was be hurting. I'd be massaging every night for her, right? So since she started doing that, she said she sent me a text yesterday. Said, you know what, my arm ain't been hurting since I've been detoxing. Hmm. I guess she was talking to somebody at work about it. And he's like, cause she a nurse, she in the nursing field, and uh, she RN, and I guess she talked to another RN. He was talking, said, no, nah, what it was, all that processed food you was eating, and you detoxing out your body, and you cleanse, you cleansing your body. And her arm ain't been hurting. I ain't had to give her a massage in four or five days. Mm-hmm. And I, but it, I, I I didn't notice it that because you know, I ain't noticed. You know, so I don't notice a lot of stuff that don't bring my attention. Mm-hmm. And she had texted me yesterday. It's like you know what my arm ain't been hurting. And we see her talking. I know what it was. It's all processed food. She said she's been licking to it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but I know I do know that. But I ain't know it it deteriorates your body a certain way. I know mm-hmm. I know it make you feel sluggish. Cause I remember a long time ago. I remember uh listening to honor honor the minister Louis Farrakhan. And he was like, if you eat some food and feel sleepy, the food is no good for you. Food don't supposed to make you sleepy. Food is for energy. Mm. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm guilty. I'm fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just looked at her right here. I don't know what you're talking about. No, it's not. No, no, but she be complaining. If food, make you, <laughs> if food make you sluggish, you eat some food. And that's true, though. Food is for energy. Food for a good nap. No, <laughs> if you call me March, my man, go to the gym. No, it's <laughs> not. No, food ain't for no good. That food for energy, though. But yeah, it, it's all go like like a woman, woman, a woman. I I go back to this book I read called Medicine. Mm-hmm. It's a good book. I think I think everybody should read it. Even if, even if you're in the health field or not, like I think it'd be a good book for you in your mm-hmm. field. Mm-hmm. Okay, it, it break down the hysterectomy and stuff like that. And I was telling mm-hmm. you, but I think it's talking about the placenta too. Mm-hmm. The, the nutrients, why they take the placenta. Uh, they talk about food, how they uh, did an experiment in Africa. One of the little villages, they took some ramen noodles, a bunch of processed sausages, and bologna stuff over there. And like in a year and a half, two thirds of the village had cancer. Yeah. And they ain't never, and that, and that's serious. Wow. It's a good book to read called Medicine. Like wow. I said, do your own, don't, let's listen to me. I, I read people read that book, do your own research, and, you see, and, and they tell you where to go to. And like it tell you like the ingredients, the ingredients a lot of food, Wait, not American start. food, it's not allowed in a lot of countries. Mm-hmm. The ingredients, all this stuff they got in these foods and these stuff, not allowed in a lot of countries. And that book, the book breaks a lot of, and it's a doctor, so you know. Can I plug someone real quick? Yeah, do okay. Your so I'd like to segue into a conversation about, well, not a conversation, but just like in thinking about prenatal nutrition. I took this really great, um, I guess it was a like six week course five week course with um her name is divine nichols her business is divine birth wisdom but her class is called pregnancy and postpartum herbs in the southern tradition and she has a whole unit on like um prenatal nutrition and and eating foods that are nourishing for your body like Blackstrap molasses has iron in it Mm. and collard greens with a pot liquor you know my mom used to make it (laughs) drink that every day that black strap molasses oh, yeah it, it's it's real it's an acquired taste mm-hmm. but you know food is medicine and mm-hmm. so i don't encourage anyone who's pregnant to like totally change their diet for the pregnancy i think it's one of those things where you just you know if you weren't eating vegetables before now is a good time but mm-hmm. um <laughs> I, I wouldn't necessarily say for someone to like not indulge in the things that they enjoy um but definitely eat vegetables, you know, leafy green vegetables. Um, prenatal vitamins are not the only source of nutrients. And I think it's important that we think back to um, historically what we were eating and, and the value of the foods that come from our histories, you know, because soul food is not always uh, a bad thing. And so I think we just Probably have to- cook it. Right. Because <laughs> I know you might be sleepy eating what we call soul food or, you know, food that... Grass. Um, what you put in? It's your green. I got you a, know, I got it's plug smothered and covered, but it. there's a lot of you really good things that, that you can eat while pregnant. Yeah. 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 I have read this disclaimer. WRFU is open forum for the Urbana Champagne in our online community. Views expressed are those of the speakers are not intended to represent WRFU, UC, IMC, or Urbana Socialist Forum. Once again, the things we're talking about is just our opinion, what we believe in, you know. If you got some different thoughts, do your own research. Let me take a time out to uh, get a shout out to the families that lost in that air- helicopter crash. The great Kobe Bryant, his daughters, and seven people, you know, as a tragedy. Our, you know, and uh, 
you know, just stay close to your loved ones, man. We gotta stop let we gotta stop let tragedies bring us together. You know what I mean? You know, you say you love somebody and you believe in them, forgive them. You gotta have a heart of forgiveness and, and keep them close to you because that's what love is all about. Love is not unforgiving. Love is the most powerful thing in the world if you understand and know how to use it. Mm -hmm. So you say you love somebody and you mad at them, you know. Don't stay mad at him. You, you never know the last breath on this earth will be. So mm. I'm having a good conversation with Miss Isis. Yes. Doula. Doula. I said right? Yes. yes. I got it right. Doula. You know, another thing, another thing, uh, I'm, I'm golf beat for a second. Give me a little segment here. Another thing that um, came out of uh, this tragedy with Kobe. Yeah, I, this, this article one of my guys sent me. And it said, uh, since Kobe Bryant's death, the Asiatic man have showed a lot of emotions, which is unnormal. Because we are taught not to show emotions mm -hmm. and be strong at all costs. But with this death, with this tragedy with him, it showed that we are emotions. We show emotions, and a lot of people show emotions through this thing. And, just let their heart felt felt out, and that's what like it's a good thing, you know. Just let some go, mm -hmm. you know. You all right, show emotions, you know. Emotion don't mean you ain't gotta be crying and stuff like that. I don't cry. I ain't cried in almost thirteen years. It's okay to cry. Yeah, I ain't say it wasn't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I'm just saying though, emotion not. If you feeling sad, you ain't gotta cry all the time. Be emotional. You might want to call that friend, somebody, and just talk and let let go. Or well, sometimes they take time yourself and let, talk to yourself. There's no answer. Because the best conversation I have with myself, come on, you know, <laughs> serious. One thing about I know I was listening. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, emotions are all different shapes and fashion, man. So just know, you know, like I said, man, let your emotions go. It ain't always about crying, but crying is good for your soul. Ain't nothing wrong with crying. You know, that's what you gotta do, but you know, but same thing, you got to pick yourself up. We had a conversation also today about lemons and lemonade. Mm -hmm. And one thing about lemons, they make lemonade. So your, your hard times make make your hard time make time good for you. But Ooh. one thing, yeah, lemon in there. But one thing about that lemonade going to run out, though. Mm -hmm. So you got to get some more lemons to make that lemonade good again. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you handle your controversies and your withdrawals, whatever you do. You know, like yeah. in recovery, you have withdrawal. That's how you come back from that withdrawal. Don't stay in that withdrawal. Make you another cup of lemonade. Mm -hmm. If you're in the streets, wow. you know what I mean? You lose a loved one. Make you another cup of lemonade. Don't mm -hmm. use no lemons to harden yourself and let them get old and be no good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because lemon, lemon is good for your body. They got are. a lot of alkaline cleansing your body out. Mm -hmm. So you got to accept that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, you got to go to that fire to come out come out as a stone. I mean, a diamond, however they say it, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but just be strong, man, and, like I said, take your time out, man. And the main thing we gotta learn out this, out this, is stop forgetting. And then, you know, every time something like this get, we gotta get all heart feel and emotion. Learn to show your emotions every day, some shape, form, or fashion, and express your love to people that you love and care about out there, man. And just let them know ain't no wrong, ain't no wrong with telling telling your your friend or your sister, somebody you love. If you love them, you know, ain't no wrong with that. Calling them, see how they doing. Don't be the one where he ain't called me. If you love this person, you're going to call this person mm -hmm. and speak speak upon and talk to them, man. So do out there, man, and stay strong. And stop letting these tragedies bring us to, to emotions, find our emotions, and get you, be there, man, and be there, example, and at least for that family or that friend that you got out there. Peace. Back to Miss Isis. All right. <laughs> hey, Kiki, that was good. That was good. Thank I you, love ladies. lemonade. Um, <laughs> do you? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um, it's good for your that was such a great inspirational vitamin. I think is what they called them on Steve Harvey's show. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really enjoying this conversation. I'm I'm just really grateful that Heather invited me to come and yeah. share. Who glad you came? Yeah, this yes. has been really yeah. fun so far. That's a strange name you got. <laughs> and then, look, it, What's strange about my name? That's a wonderful name, man. I mean, you know where I it comes from? Where it comes from? That's good. I bet she knows. Israel somewhere? Uh, it, well, it's Egyptian, yeah. but yeah, Isis is an Egyptian goddess. She's actually the goddess of motherhood, fertility, and creation. So. Ooh, wait, look at that! <laughs> I guess I, I had no I, choice I, but to do the work uh, I do. I don't know. Yes, yeah. Not to be confused with the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Mm -hmm. Just want to point 
Right, right. <laughs> yeah, right. I was yeah. here first. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Sure. Yep. And uh, can I share my event? That's yeah. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, up, if I had known there was an audio visual component, I would have brought my flyer. But it's, uh, all good. it's all good. So, but since I didn't, you can actually go to my uh, business page, which is Isis I S I S A as an Apple. So it's Isis A Rose comma doula isis a rose doula on facebook and um we i'll be posting updates and information about my event and there's actually an event created on facebook for the event um so anyway the event is called birthing while black and it's not an original title they, they've had birthing while black events elsewhere throughout the country so i wish i could take full credit for the name anywho it's called birthing while black um i'm excited because it's actually a two-part workshop um, on February 29th and March 7th, it's at the library, Douglas Branch, the Black Library. Mm -hmm. um, that was intentional. We're really hoping to attract and create an intentional safe space for Black people to come and talk and share their experiences navigating the um, birth system here in Champaign-Urbana. Um, we are going to be talking about consumer rights, what to expect, um, how to advocate for yourself, and just information you should know to arm yourself um, and feel like you can go into your birth experience um, you know knowledgeable and able to really talk to your providers and um, get the answers to the questions that you're seeking um, it's also a way to expose to the community what a doula actually is which we touched on in the beginning of the conversation here um, and just to also introduce myself to the community mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. as someone who now works independently as a doula so I'm currently taking clients look me up it. yes um but i'm excited because this is a collaborative event and my friend she's also a nurse and a student midwife her name's taffy brown she and i recently connected and she lives in peoria but we've been both thinking about how to make birth you know a, a super big um thing in the community that we can like organize and galvanize around for black people so she's also hoping to um, we're piloting this project and this workshop so that she can bring it also to Peoria yes. um, and have it for their community as well. And so she's co-hosting the event with me. Um, I have some friends coming in from Chicago. Shout out to them. They may yes. not may or may not be listening, but um, my friend Shaquan Dupart, she goes by Doula for the People or the People's Doula on social media. Um, she's an amazing person as well. Right now, she's a doula and a student midwife, and um, I believe she and Taffy are actually in the same program. And she's awesome. She and her friend, colleague, sister friend, <coughs> Janine Valerie Logan. Janine Logan is a nurse midwife in Chicago. Um, she's also a co-author of this book called um, Free to Breastfeed, Voices of Black Mothers. Um, so she's, you know, a, a published author, a midwife, and the two of them, Shaquan and Janine, have their own podcast called Birth Worker Bays, um, and that's on all podcast platforms. So they have a podcast now. I think they're working on their fourth episode. Um, it's like my favorite podcast, <laughs> besides my own, which we can talk about. Um, and so I'm really excited that they're gonna be also co-facilitating the event because they've had, you know, even more birth experience than me and Taffy um, in terms of like being a doula and, and organizing events out of Chicago. Um, Shaquan created the Chicago Black Doula Alliance, which is to bring the black doulas in Chicago under the same kind of network. Um, and so they are all just helping to really facilitate a really um, deep and robust conversation with the folks here in Champaign-Urbana and I'm just so excited that they agreed to work with me. Great. Um, so at the very least, you'll find out about all of us awesome people, um, but I know that anyone who comes will take away a lot of really great information from this event. And so, yeah, that's my little spiel. Wonderful. Doula gang. Yes, thank doula you. Gang. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what you mentioned earlier, you do a lot of things besides doula, or just you just do a lot of things in the doula field. Right. So. Um, real quick, I don't know if I actually said when the event's happening. It's February 29th and March 7th from 2 to 4 p.m. at Douglas Library. Um, we are also hoping to provide uh, refreshments and 
and childcare, but we can't do that if we don't know how many people need care. So right. I'm encouraging everyone to uh, register on Eventbrite. What kind of food you have? It's not, it's yeah. not like dinner food, so don't come super hungry. It's like oh. light refreshment. Oh, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I do a lot of birth-related work. Um, so in addition to being a doula, I also host a podcast and that podcast is called Homecoming Podcast. Mm -hmm. And this this is a project that I created back in 2018, fall of 2018, with my co-host, her name's Shay Pounds. Shay is also a doula and a student midwife, black woman in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I actually met her at my doula training and we just clicked, you know, and we both got bit by the home birth bug. So now we have a podcast the only podcast that exclusively features the stories of black families who birth at home. That's why you hang with doula, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. That's how you grow, though. Hang with your kind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, if you haven't Knowledge. figured out by now, I'm obsessed with birth, and most of my friends are also obsessed with birth and all things you know, kids related you to mothering it. and supporting people who parent. Um, how many kids do I have? How many you gonna have? You say oh, you have. now that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I have one child. She's two years old. I don't know if I'm having any more because the one I have is amazing. So, right. you know, we'll see. Um, I'm right. still young. I, I still claim youth, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, no. I don't you know. know. Long, you just said you're <laughs> about, <laughs> you're about six of them. Oh, you guys have people with birth. I do know a lot of people who have, like, five-plus kids. I don't think that's ever going to be me, but I, I'll never say never, so... Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just really excited, and I think the reason why I'm here today is not only to promote my event, but just to get people excited about building a more robust Black birth community in Champaign Urbana. Because mm -hmm. me myself personally, when I was pregnant, you know, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of great resources and great people in the birth space here. However, most like everything else in this town is predominantly white, yeah. and yeah. so. I'm, I'm comfortable with all people, but there's a lot of people who just aren't. So when you show up to a breastfeeding meeting and you're the only black person, that can yeah. be very off-putting. They had breastfeeding meeting? <laughs> yeah, they do. Yes, there's support of all kinds yeah. for all You don't talk about to put the nip in the mouth. And yeah. You know, she don't how to put the nip in the mouth. Okay, first of all, breastfeeding is hard, yes, so let me is. just say that. I ain't like, saying it was. I'm just saying it's hard. It's, it's it, hard. As natural as breastfeeding is, it's not always easy. Why? 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 People have different types of nipples. Babies have different types of mouths. Mm -hmm. People have different types of supplies. It's a whole thing. It's mm -hmm. complicated. And so we need support around breastfeeding. Did you breast sell your breast milk? Did I sell it? No, you know, but football, I'm not above selling it. You know, football, you know, football players, my <laughs> break. We got, we yeah, got, there's. I think yeah. people sell their milk to people on Instagram, like bodybuilders drink yeah, breast milk. Yeah, they do too, yeah. Yeah. Because it's better than, you know, we, we're the only, the only mammal, living mammal that drink milk. Other mammals? Birth. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you ever think about, think about that? Do I think about it? I've thought about it. It's not like, I don't think about it a lot, but, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean. No, I ain't just saying. I, mean, we just talking, I ain't talking about you. Living, it's, no, it's I mean, kind of weird yeah, it's, 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 it's an interesting only, thing to yeah, think about. Yeah, we're the only definitely. mammals that drink. You, you can't give other mammals mm -hmm. milk, the other people milk. They, you got to force it upon them. You know what I mean? You trick me, yeah. you know, and they know it's not there. I think I think about it only when people are like breastfeeding. Why would you do that? You know, because there's a whole generation of people mm -hmm. who we descend from yeah. who were they forced and coerced into formula feeding, and yeah. they weren't told any other way. Why you think that has a whole history too. Why do you think mm -hmm. masters was making out uh, 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 women breastfeed their kid? Well, exactly. So you had enslaved black women breastfeeding white women's children. Meanwhile, their own children were starving, Probably, yeah. you know, and you also have the dynamic of, well, you don't want to spoil your baby or you don't want to breastfeed your baby because you have to go work in the fields. You have to go work in the house. So it's harder to work and do manual labor with a baby attached to you, you know? And so that's why that's, that's when that's the history of breastfeeding in this country for black women, you know? Yeah, breastfeeding classes. And when you go into these mm -hmm. very white spaces, they yes. don't always acknowledge these things and right. the, the very complicated history that we have with breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important to have a robust birth community here for mm -hmm. black people because we have a unique history. And when you go into certain spaces, it doesn't feel safe to talk about those things. Right. Right. So. Because a lot of people don't even like have people in their family who have breastfed before mm -hmm. and so they're the first ones and they don't feel like they have adequate support which is why they need a breastfeeding group. I met you about eight months ago. 
Got my daughter pregnant. Really? Yes. Yeah, uh, Congratulations. Nah, don't congratulate me. That's all right. Not a joke. Thank you. Thank you. Oh but yeah, she pregnant. No, no, serious though. I like, like, like I, I can tell her eat healthy and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I think a doula is a great thing. The way you yeah. breaking stuff down and saying mm -hmm. stuff, I think a doula is a part part of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Now, with this, you look, mind me asking how old she is? She twenty two. Okay, okay, still very young. Yeah, she very yeah. young. And uh, I really think with the the you know, it's a lot of stuff I knew and a lot of stuff I didn't know. For like the doula part, for mm -hmm. for, and I I think that's something she she would have benefited for mm -hmm. from a mm -hmm. little more. I do want to plug real quick. An agency here is called Children's Home and Aid. I used to work for them, and they actually have a doula program, and they specifically target women under the age of 25. And so, and that's because a lot of young moms, teen moms, yeah. don't have adequate support around yeah. their pregnancies, yeah. either because their families aren't supportive or they just, you know, we don't have comprehensive sex education in yeah. schools, you know, so people don't even really understand the changes that are happening in their bodies, let alone being able to care for a newborn, right. you know what I'm saying? And so um, that's a whole nother issue in mm -hmm. our community as well. Like as much as we love babies and as much as we want to support our women, we don't always consider that, you know, there are a lot of women whose babies aren't being welcomed because a lot of people don't even think that baby should have existed in the first place. And So you say you know, a lot of women don't talk to their kids in detail about having babies? Um. I mean, I think that just depends on, on the family dynamics, but I think a lot of, I can only speak for myself, but the people that I know, a lot of our parents, you know, were either reluctant to have the sex talk or when they did, it was all about STIs and it wasn't about like, this is what happens when you get pregnant. You know, I feel like we, we focus a lot on preventing disease when it comes to sex. And so when it comes to actually like, talking about the mechanics of pregnancy and childbirth. That's usually something that we never learn in school. And some of us never learn from our parents, you know? And mm -hmm. so I just think that we need to start having more open conversations around sex and the body so yeah. that we're not like stigmatizing sexuality or mm -hmm. stigmatizing birth because all these things are natural human experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, know, I try to scare my kids with STDs and all that. So my daughters, when they was little, I try to scare them. <laughs> I ain't talking about the pregnancy. Exactly, exactly. You know, exactly. And you know, I think every parent wants their kids to make good yeah, decisions that, around you know. their sex mm -hmm. lives, but yeah, scare right. tactics, scare tactics. I ain't tell my son. I tell him you know, to do. that's yeah. I mean, that's that's only part of the issue, right? Like, mm -hmm. like the fear of getting pregnant and the fear of getting an STI okay once you have that fear but then okay if something actually happens what do you do now right you know? they cured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they i'm just saying it. we have to let the conversation continue See, on yeah. past the the point but, of fear yeah, tactics exactly, because yeah, it right. won't do us any yeah. good as a community mm -hmm. yeah i think yeah i think I, I, I think everything has to do with education mm -hmm. the, the, the knowledge to give them like they so busy they never gonna push our agenda, the Asiatic agenda. They always push everybody else's agenda into these schools. And I think everybody home should school their children by certain things, like you said, mm -hmm. by getting pregnant and stuff like that. Because that's the only way you gonna they gonna learn. Mm -hmm. They're not you can't leave everything to these schools. Mm -hmm. These schools these schools is messed up. They taking all the things that, that benefit kids out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. You might have to do your disclaimer message again. No, so no, no. I know, I know. I'm just no, no, I agree, though. I mean, you can't rely on the schools to teach your kids everything, you know. And part of being a conscious person or a conscious parent is to be proactive and intentional about what you're teaching your kids. And a lot of that is also just by leading from leading from example, exactly. you know. So if you have a doula and you have an unmedicated birth and you and you do breastfeed and your children see that. It's not going to be such a like, you know, stark contrast when it's their time, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm just here to help people understand that they have more choices in childbirth, and that you know a lot of these things can actually be very healing because so many of our birth choices have been taken away for hundreds of years. I have a question. Do you do a lot more natural things other than the childbirth, mm -hmm. as far as like 
personally, mm. I see you have your natural hair. And, you know, the it's natural thing curl. is... No, it's not an S-curl. Hold on, 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 Oh, what do you say? Talk about that with fruits and berries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, my hair is natural. I yeah. think natural hair is a gateway to living more naturally, though. Like, for no real. Why you say that? Why you say that? <laughs> well, I did the big chop when I was, like, a junior in college. Maybe a senior. What's the big chop? I think I was a senior in college. Basically, when you cut all your hair off and let it grow out naturally, you know, I did have a perm, uh, I think. The last time I had a perm, I was, like, 19 chopped my hair when I was 21 haven't looked back since you know I have grown it out longer than this but yeah I mean <laughs> I do in terms of like natural living though I do see naturopathic doctors and I try to avoid allopathic western medicine as much as possible I'm not gonna lie um you know I just I feel like because the human body was designed to be self-healing oh yeah because food is medicine and because mm -hmm. you know herbs and plants are medicine and and once we tap into that understanding and that divine wisdom, you know, um, you can live a more natural life. And, you know, you're, um, yeah, I, I, I try to live as naturally as possible. I'm not vegan. I still consume animal products. That's probably my biggest sticking point. I love chicken. I made a post about it yesterday. Um, but other than that, yes, I do live a pretty natural, naturalistic lifestyle. You fry lifestyle. chicken? I don't fry it myself, but I eat fried chicken. Get you, get you. I'm gonna give me an air fryer. <laughs> my daughter, my daughter, buy me one. Yeah, I want to see what it tastes like. I want to try and see if somebody got an air fryer that tastes. I did, I did. I, 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 I'm saying some of them kind of expensive. I got yeah, my cousin that fryer. Yeah, yeah. I got my cousin that fryer. I use his. Yeah. You say? Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna give me an air you know, fryer. I, I, and you know, I have, You know, I got it. I, I used to have a juicer. The new, the, they said the ninja yeah. is the best one. The ninja, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking about the juicer. Juicer. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah. It's expensive. Uh, okay, there's this movie called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. Mm -hmm. oh, it's really wow. good because he talks about how like eating all this junk and processed food and sugar almost killed him. Mm -hmm. He got a juicer and did like a juice cleanse and like lost thirty pounds, like changed his cholesterol levels. Mm -hmm. Like it was a whole thing, and what that's what inspired fat? me what to actually it? get a juicer. What is it? But I don't fat? have it anymore. Fat, sick, and nearly dead. This is my thing. But you yeah. can't just drink juice. No, I don't advocate things. for only drinking juice. I'm no, just his probably cleanse. Mm -hmm. You can do it oh, he got two for easy. a certain mm -hmm. time. It's easy for you, you know? to drink and soon, right? Came out two thousand ten. Make me in the blender because it'd be all kind of thick. Like. So the juicer is just juice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The blender is. It's going to be everything. Yeah, so that's another reason like why soup, I kind of left so the, the juice behind. Though. Well, the juice extracts all the skin and all the other stuff, which people argue is where the nutrients are. So I would rather just blend the whole oh, well, I guess I blend like, it. I don't, I don't do the juicer thing. Juicer. I, so I blend my kale and all that. It's, that's, yeah, that's perfect. I, sometimes it's I eat your raw preference. Though. Yeah, Basically. raw is the best way. It's your preference. That's what you said earlier, right? <laughs> I like you. Like that. She, she, she was yeah. saying you do too. I ain't said she was, she was reading my mind. Oh, shit. Yeah. Hey, don't tell me. I don't know what you can and cannot say on this platform. My apologies. No, you're good. I know this might, this this might this be like PG or whatever. No, you're good. This is no, good. This is no Ooh, stone. We are good. Tell this Ooh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, there you go. This is going to be at the top. No, best at the top. Raw best, but no, all joke aside. Okay. Raw vegetables is good for you because they say when you cook, you cook certain nutrients yeah, out of it and stuff like that. True. That's why they say you should steam them. But you like should, you, mm -hmm. you, you should, them, uh, you can steam them. Also, you don't supposed to have it on high heat and mm -hmm. having it yeah. baked and fried for a long time. I like, you my, know? I like, I like I used to eat, so. I used to eat whole bell, I used to eat whole bell peppers, mm -hmm. like apples. I, mean, I, like, I can't stand I raw bell, bell peppers. peppers. That's why. I don't like raw bell peppers. Like five. I love raw bell peppers. Me too. In the salad, Man. onions, garlic. I love red onions. I do not understand. Olives, I red put onions. Bell peppers in almost anything I cook. Me I too. I make. <laughs> I just cook it. That's yeah. one so first thing you see in her icebox. You open bell peppers. I got I got to buy one so. now because so I'm making a, a dip for the uh, Super Bowl tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that was tomorrow. I'm gonna give you the list soon. Okay? I ain't gonna say. I won't ask you no more. But yeah, I got you. But yeah, food. Oh my gosh. Um, Go for it, man. Man, the food, we need to really think about some things with the food. Because, man, that food is a death trap. Um, Rogue food is a death trap. That's what you got you have to about. understand that the food now compared to years ago is totally different. Mm -hmm. Then there's more parasites and all this other stuff. We're not going to get into all of that. 
but the minerals and everything that's supposed to be in our food is now well, what's the most lost. healthiest food y'all think to eat chinese people chinese food I have no idea. No, they have food like food. Mediterranean Man, and Chinese Indian. Food the most I love you know, Indian food. Yes. I love Chinese Indian food. That's my Chinese food. That's my talking vote. about Chinese yeah. food? Yeah. They're the most healthiest food. You, you eat yeah. cats and dogs. Yeah. Come, Come on. Start now. Dang, we know the disclaimer. <laughs> I have to disclaim him. <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> Are you like, but she likes Chinese food. We, yeah, I'm talking like about Chinese going to eat something now. I do like Chinese food. It all depends on what you're getting. Damn it, don't go do it, man. You get what I'm saying? Because when I wake up, when I eat the Chinese food, I don't feel heavy. I feel, you know, like... Rice is heavy. Rice is starch. I be feeling good. What kind of Chinese food you going to eat? Egg food young or shrimp fried rice? I'm going to give me some basin chicken. Basin chicken? Shrimp fried rice and basin chicken. That's what I'm saying. Shrimp fried rice and basin chicken. Yeah. Eat half the day and eat the other half tomorrow for Sunday. No. You got to work tomorrow? So... People be talking about food. You have to eat 80 to 20. That's like the rule. You know, eat 80% fruit and vegetables and then 20 the rest of the stuff. You really don't need all of the food, all of the meat that you're consuming right now. Any you don't need no you meat. Don't you don't even need, need it. Like you, if you like eat like one like thing of like chicken for the week, that'll be good. Your stomach needs it though. You know, in order to like really process some things. I'm not ready to let y'all know what's going on with me yet, but soon I will let you know hey, what I'm doing. I, I hope but, so. I hope so. I hope you get, get you some vitamin D in your life. Some, some sun. Oh, shh. Wow. Wow. So I thought it was some sun. Vitamin D from the sun. Whatever, man. Shh. Yeah, shut vitamin up. Vitamin D from the sun. But you got to get the minerals and Everybody the nutrients do. from the food. Man, and you know, nowadays... We have where they are. Take my friend. She a good looking young woman too, man. Just shut up. So no, no, no. I'm being, I'm staying focused. No, see, this one I'm talking about. I got stuff to do. But nutrients from the food have been gone. They're lost. You just have to replace them with the mm. right nutrients and the minerals and everything else. So the herbs is real good to couple with the foods. That so what's the best? Eating. What what's the best vegetables to eat? Best got vegetables. Yeah, the best, the best, <laughs> broccoli. The best I mean, best, any, no, broccoli, man made. Any any of the fruits are I good. I have no idea. Okay, yeah, all of it are good, yeah. but it's never certain that. things that are higher in the scale. Cauliflower. You ever seen broccoli field? A, a broccoli farm? Okay then. You saw I, a tomato farm, right? You I don't know, have any expertise in vegetables. You know, you know tomato farm. You see no farms, don't you? Yeah. Google it, man. I I my my daughter didn't believe me neither. Just, just my told her. You just ain't seen one. That's all. You so just some Google of the foods it, are man-made. That's well, Google it. Yeah. Like see? carrots. You believe Heather though? My carrot ain't what? no man-made. Carrot is man-made. Where you? Where they come from? The ground. Shut up. They do man, come I'm from done. the ground. I'm done. The carrot. Man, y'all better do some research. There, I don't know about. I don't know where baby carrots come from. Some of the stuff is man made. That's regular all. Exactly. Come from. Okay. Some things, believe me, some things. Even even maize, or we'll go to the point man, where listen, we'll man. say corn. We about okay? to get. We about to get up out of here. Not, it's not good. For <laughs> we got to get up out of here. Right. It's a great show today, Miss Isis yeah. Rose. Yeah. Had, yeah. Had, no. the, had the cousin. Yeah. Damon, y'all cousins for real. She freaked Damon out talking about the vicinity. I wish y'all could see him in the face man. How many faces he got? They're talking about eating people, eating people. <laughs> what? We're not talking about Damn eating people. That Damn. is people. That's an but, uh, organ. But it's a person. It's not a person. It's coming out of a person. Uh, okay. What's your name? Like my grandma said. So I can be found on social media, Isis A. Rose Doula, and my event, Birthing While Black. It's a two-part workshop on February 29th and March 7th, 2 to 4 p.m. at Douglas Branch Library here in Champaign. I would love to see as many black faces in the room as possible. <laughs> and um, yes, please hire me to be your doula. I would love to help coach yes. you through pregnancy, labor, birth, and postpartum. Way, yes, great. Right. Have a nice week, Have a nice guys. Weekend. Stay safe. Yes, thank stay you so safe. much. Stay focused. Show your loved ones love all the time. Don't hold grudge against people you love. Get some vitamin D. Get some vitamin D in your keep life. Keep plenty sanitizer. Keep your hands <laughs> clean. Eat green leafy vegetables. I, I, yep. I, I'm playing for an all exclusive date with Heather. <laughs> She, she need a, uh, she needs some help. Can't take to no buffets. She just went crazy with this cleansing, this detox thing. No man on the man. 
She was drunk. Oh, you right? telling all your business. Man, she, hey, she told her already. Whatever. I'm saying. I forgot Damon. Damon was sad, so. <laughs> well, oh, I'm more con- 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 community connection out, man. Stay safe, man. All good job side. Stay safe, man. Stay focused, man. And, and stay on, on, on track to showing your emotions to your loved ones and keeping people close to you, man. And, and don't hold grudges forever, man, because life is short, man. Peace. Bye, you guys. Bye, you guys.